How did you handle that rejection? Being overpowering women, being probably quite controlling. Oy, being that, left. Yeah. I mean, there's some things I've not talked of ever, but like I had just, so I was left. I, yeah, I've packaged this away fairly successfully. So I had Indy, my eldest, and she's one and a half. Then I have Poppy straight off the bat. And um, I was left in the maternity ward with Poppy and he left and he never, so I had the baby. He was sort of there, although he was chatting up the nurses. And uh, then he left the next morning and I woke up in the maternity unit with Poppy and I had to get a taxi home. So I had a one and a half year old, a one day old, and he'd gone to go and, and I knew he was with the lady he'd left with. And that, that, that was so brutal. And honestly, uh, without a word of a lie, once I started working through the things you have to deal with when that sort of thing happens, so you have to separate stuff, the divorce papers come through, you have to start working out what you're going to sell, what you're going to, you have to work through shit. I honestly looked into, and I had roots to uh, getting a hitman to take out my husband, not, not a joke. Um, I had a good bunch of contacts in the Marines and uh, because it felt much more, it felt much more practical as a solution than going through the rigmarole. And I felt for my daughters that when they grew up, it would be much more mm, reassuring for them, for me to say your father got killed in a whatever car accident than it would to say, well, your dad left you. And I've never once ever said that to my girls, nor will I. And I've never once uh, not held the line that things didn't work out and, and here I am and this has worked out great and isn't your life great and what should we do later? And mm. I've never once gone back and criticised or talked of this with them. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's when you then press the fuck it button and go, I'm already broken sort of thing, so I'm just going to own it? I just... I, 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 at the time of, say, applying for The Apprentice, I wanted to shift, like, so, you know, if you're going along a straight line, mm. I wanted to shift 90 degrees. And I didn't even care if it was 180 in a downhill trajectory. Like, it didn't matter. I just needed to shift this thing. And I remember applying. I can remember filling in that application form. And I can remember using all the tools of, of life and things we learn about how do I get in this? How do I talk my way into this? How do I and writing that form to get me on the show. And I knew kind of what they would be looking for. I knew what I had to do. I would be the big ball busting corporate America, woman in the white suit, which I wore all the time, uh, who happens to have two kids as well and is like power balls. And I wrote in, in one of the questions on the application forms, what's the worst thing you've ever done? And it was, I stole someone else's husband. And I went to the interview process, was mad for The Apprentice, but every time you got past an interview table, which was just set up like this, I'd mm. tell them the stuff I knew they wanted to hear, and I'd be sent to the next room, and the next room, and the next room, till I ended up in front of the big panel. And I knew this was the big panel. I knew they would want me on, because I was kind of odd. I was an oddity, 28, you know, alone, kids, powerful, big salary. And the example I gave in my handbag, by by chance, I'd needed to get. I don't. You do. Ha, do you have children? Yeah, two. How old are they? Both Not twelve. To pry. Um, so you know, maybe you know that shopping for children's shoes. Like if you had a choice of killing yourself or shopping for children's shoes, you'd probably pick killing yourself. <laughs> like that's how I feel. I hate shoe stores. I hate other mothers. I hate mm. other children. So I had drawn around the girls' tiny feet. They were only this big. One one and one and a half. And I'd taken the template of drawing around their feet to the shoe shop because I thought, well, I'll just get the shoe that fits the template. I don't have to take kids in. I don't have to deal with children or people and I'll get the shoes. And at the interview, that's what I produced out of my handbag because I thought it was a smart shortcut for an efficient way of mothering and life. And I could see on all of their faces that didn't seem normal to them. And I said, like, oh, OK, then. So I ended up on The Apprentice and then that's when I was just honest. I was just damn honest. You know, if someone was terrible, I said it. If someone was looked dreadful in their outfits, I said it. If someone was too orange, whatever that orange Irish woman was called, I said it. And I thought everyone else was doing the same. Mm -hmm. And then and then it came to air and it was just me.